Greetings fellow Miss Walkers, I'm LP from Easy20 and today I'm very pleased to inform you that we have audio excerpts from this session. For example, and this is the tradition and or blessing that we'll say from henceforth. Yes, we pray to the mighty gods of whiskey with a swear word in Portuguese in a question form. And it's been working thus far for something. So about these audios, they are in Portuguese, but all relevant moments will be subtitled in English. Having that said, session three, A Light in Darkness, part one, is all about finding and exploring the Durst Manor, the famed Curse of Strahd death house. And as a DM, I can absolutely say it was funny as hell. Without any further ado. The weather seemed to be deteriorating fast into a storm, making the mansion very appealing for this unlikely team. Still, seeing children outside of their own home, which was lost in the middle of the woods, and feeling the mists looming ever closer to them, did not bode well in their minds. Cautiously, they questioned Roosevelt and Thornbolt, or Rose and Thorn for short, as they feared from their last encounter that they could be beings that suffered from lycanthropy. Through their careful lenses, they did not verify their suspicions. But they did discover that these siblings were terrified of a monstrous roar that they had heard inside the mansion that had shaken the very foundations of it as they ran outside. The children also reported that their parents, Gustav and Elizabeth Durst, Durst? O primeiro nome dele é Fred. Yeah! Eu tentei. Ok. And their younger brother, Walter, were probably still inside the house. Por acaso o álbum dele chama-se Chocolate Starfish? Yeah! Eu perguntei se o senhor se chamava Fred. Yeah! As these conversations take place, Brad and Regulus wanted to take a good look around the house. Brad didn't see anything relevant, but Regulus noticed a brief light passing through one of the windows in the third floor. He relays it to the group, which steal themselves to go through the front door. Except for Bogdan, who is not only a mix of orc and human, but also fearless and unwise, decided that it was best to get the upper hand on a possible unknown roaring creature on an unknown building in an unknown room that emanated some strange lights and as such climbed the house to the balcony of the third floor Let's go by parts. This level 1 half-orc barbarian, after a brutal battle against wolves, in which he fell unconscious twice, diffusing his relentless endurance ability, takes a short rest to gather his bearings. I wanted to know if we are all bons de saúde, se não houve assim nenhuma baixa grave, se já tive cansado. melhores dias, já tive melhores dias. É, então, é, tô... já é, ele bebeu o leite de nipa, ele está bem. Ok, ok, ok. And while still holding on to his barely healed cuts and bruises, he receives the information that there's something wrong inside this mansion with a possible monstrous antagonist. He is also informed of some strange lights on the upper floors wipes his brow from the rain and the sweat, looks at the size of the mansion and says, time to go to work, decides to climb 20 feet, high enough that the fall could theoretically push him back to zero on session three from a fall, 
for all of you new players. This is what D&D is all about, and it's also what I have to suffer every session. The half-orc, who got there without any problems, observed the cradle through the window, motionless, with a black cloth over it. When reporting to Ray via Ray's message ability, he noticed that the windows around him began to frost, and a pair of blue, icy eyes were observing him from the inside, which quickly disappeared. I feel this. I feel <laughs> Not content with the amount of danger he was putting himself in, he decides to advance through the shutters. Inside, he observes a woman-like figure sitting on a bed with long, flowing hair and notably legless, but floating in a spectral way. And yes, these were the tips I gave him. Gripping his weapon tightly, trying to suppress his fear, he tries to start a conversation with this spirit called Margaret. In his questioning, she seemed afflicted by some sort of amnesia, going around in his questions, answering the same as before, but specified multiple times. Don't wake up Walter. He also obtained the information that the siblings should be in their room. As their parents lock them there, before going to the basement. Yeah, they weren't at the door anymore. The remaining members entered through the boring, ordinary way. Oh, who does that these days? Trying to call for the missing parents. There was no answer. No human or non-human answered their call. Feeling himself unprepared for another battle like the one before, the professor decided to pick up and equip an emblazoned shield with an emblem of a mill over a valley with a red backdrop and a longsword with some precious stone symbolizing the same from the atrium. They began exploring one of the rooms, which felt more like a trophy room more than anything else. On the walls, there were some stuffed wolves, which seemed to be following their movement with their own gaze. Feeling sort of safe as a group, yet still moving cautiously, they decide to push further and find some ranged weapons inside one of the clock cabinets. Wanting to check on Bolden, who hadn't still respond to any of their calls, they decide to ascend quickly. On the second floor, they call once again for Bolden, but with no answer. They do discover, however, a large music room with a piano and a harp. Also inside, underneath one of the armchairs, there was a small puppy with a tag appropriate to his size with the name Lancelot. Regulus tried to get him out of there and befriend the seemingly scared animal. But Ray, still calloused by the recent events and the ambient of the house, and remembering that a monster roared as the children ran through the house, cast a tissue touch, don't ask what it is, on what he thought was certainly a trap or a guise of some sort. You can derive what happened to the puppy as a result. No one who was there appreciated this kind of behavior, in particular Regulus. No matter if it was a trap or not, he wanted to check on him. Hmm. <laughs> Ok, eu ouço este barulho. Dele. Não, eu não ouço este barulho. Nada. Não, sim. Ele fez barulho. 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 Ele fez Roda para dar Eu dei do meu leite! Eu dei tudo do meu leite! Foi eu. Não foi a ti! Foi a ti! Foi não. a ti! Exato. Olha, foi pingança disso! Eu dei tudo do meu leite! Deste uma chapada! Deste uma chapada! Roda para dar O cãozinho era doce! Era o cãozinho que vai assustado! Ele não leva dano? Quero uma chapada! 
Ah, não, 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 So a heated argument began in the music room, which was directly below the room where Bovan and Margaret were. Sensing these loud sounds from beneath, the spectre began showing signs of anger, aggressively warning Bovan again and again, Don't wake up, Walter. Fortunately for his own level 1 health, the argument was brief even if heated, and she returned to the seated position in the bed. In the next room, a library, the remaining members discovered a musical score that was named Music for Elizabeth. There was also a small collection of stones, underneath which there were some receipts for knives, incenses and candles. Orson, however, discovered a book that was named, strangely, The Life of Orson Lane. A book that specified all events that had ever happened to his own life, including a predestination of his death. Ele puxou o livro bastante e começou a ler. Ai, foda-se. Não estando atento à criatura que o olhava das sombras. Lentamente, a besta começou-se a aproximar. Ok, eu olhava. A página está em branco. Tirando uma pequena marca de sangue, dois terços abaixo do livro. Sei o Pessoal, estamos a ser observados. Sei o Eu dou-me Estamos a ser observados. Investigating a book called The Art of Architecture by Archibald Bulwarton, they opened a secret door in that library that contained a chest and some books referring to a certain cult of Ozibush. Ray, however, worried about Bordan climbed to the next floor to meet him, who, while exchanging reports of what they've seen, noticed clanking sounds that reveal the armor suddenly rising to give them a proper reception.